Hello, it's been about a year since I've done a video from the battery lab. We've accumulated a lot of new chemistry. Lots of new chemicals, plates, separators. We've been doing some interesting experiments. We've learned a lot, but we've finally got one heck of a battery. This is really interesting. This is flexible electrolyte. It's conductive. It's like rubber. It lasts forever. And it holds a uh, a heck of a lot of electricity. I have to get into that on the next video. Anyhow, this is the jewel. This has a, an aluminum plate and a membrane separator and then a piece of uh, cardboard with a few interesting doping chemicals on it. Now this is a waterproof type of cardboard the electrolyte in here is, uh, that's the concoction, but it's dirt cheap. This is a single cell battery. It's about six by seven inches. And the power we're getting out of this battery is phenomenal. You gotta remember in a car battery or when we put this into production, this will have probably 60 plates together. So this is my wiring mess. A couple motors we use for testing. These are 500 milliamp each. So we got an amp between both of them. And uh, I think this one's fully charged. Let's take a look. It's about a full charge. I, I can turn it up higher, the charging rate, but I don't get any more power out of it. It likes to, it likes to charge around 2.2 and I'm going to turn this off and its natural landing point is about 2.8 so let's uh let's run some motors with it let's turn this motor on yep wire keeps popping off. Maybe that will stay. Let's turn on motor number two. I have lost the terminal for motor number two. As you see, the voltage is down to 14, but if we turn it off, it goes back up to its resting voltage. And you're going to see it's actually going to gain energy uh, while it's resting here. Oh, there's my other clip. It's clipped onto there. Oh, I can't find it. I'm going to clip it there for now. bite into the wood. Okay, back to 2.8. That's where it likes to rest. Uh, turn motor one back on. Uh, motor With both motors running, the cell's down to 1.1 volt. And you can see it's pretty, holding pretty steady for, for a single plate cell. It's not bad. So when we turn the motors uh, back off, it's actually got quite a bit of 
of power. It goes up to its resting voltage and starts to climb, which means it's actually starting to rejuvenate itself and build power back into uh, the battery cell. So just by not running it, it'll recharge itself. It'll probably do this uh, about 50 times till all, all the active chemical has been eaten up and then we'll have to recharge it. Keep in mind, again, a lead acid battery has about 48 to 60 plates in it. And that's what we're going to do with this one. We're going to build uh, either a giant roll cell or we'll put about 50 or 60 of these together. I can't stress enough how cheap this battery is to build. I've looked at the uh, patents, then patent searches. There's no prior art like this. Very, very few people using the type of chemistry I'm using. Uh, these batteries have quite a high profit margin. They also recharge I hate, <laughs> I hate to say this because it sounds corny, but this thing may recharge for 30 or 40 years. There's nothing in here that can break down. Uh, the chemistry is slightly acidic, so the aluminum is protected. And the aluminum is the cathode. So again, you're gaining material on the aluminum. There's no real... Uh, danger. Both motors running again. So it's got quite a bit of torque. Ow. It really hurts when you slow it down. So we got two motors running. On a battery that costs about this plate, the most expensive part is the aluminum. The plate's about uh, 35 cents in aluminum. And the rest of it's almost free. It's very cheap chemistry. Uh, the membrane's just paper and polypropylene. And then we have an active chemical that's soaked into the, uh, the cardboard plate on the other side, which is the anode. And uh, this thing will run and run and run for several hours, pulling one amp. And uh, like I say, this is the voltage while it's running it's coming down because it's a single cell take that off we'll remove this and again here we go that's starting to recover This will keep recovering till it's all the way back up to 2.8. All right, now uh, over here is a, a fun experiment. This is a, a salt water battery. This is nothing but table salt, water, and two pieces of steel. We'll turn on this. Uh, meter. I'll try and put it all down here so we can read this all at the same time. Now I'm holding the camera with one hand so this is going to be tricky. All right, see if I can get it all aimed together. Two point eight volts. Okay. So it's 2.8 volts. What will 2.8 volts run? Well, let's try one of these little motors.
take the motor, hang it here. Clip it onto that plate. And clip the other on the positive. And we do have to turn off the charging power. And now uh, I'm gonna take this and we'll make our motor run with just salt water and electricity and paper towels. That's all it is. And here we go. Come on, here we go. And it's taken off. Not very impressive, and it dies. <laughs> And that's it. That's the salt water battery. You get a, about two seconds of use. In the charge, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip onto these leads. These right here. These are the leads that went up to the motor. And we went from two volts. <laughs> 0.6 within us within a few seconds this thing completely died so it shows you what a really bad battery looks like now we call this bad but now it has an interesting it has a very interesting um, phenomenon once it gets down to 1.6 we're gonna run this 25 milliamp motor and I connect this up to here. And here goes the connection. And there goes the 25 milliamp motor. This motor will run for four months. Last time we did this experiment, this motor ran four and a half months on one charge. But the voltage is half a volt. But if you had a lot of these cells together, if you had a big empty barn and you could put 5,000 of these together, saltwater bridges, you could create a very large, very long lasting storage battery. And the thing is, this actually holds its power. We come back a year later, it's still at a volt and a half, or excuse me, a half a volt. And this thing will run and run and run and run and run. So let's go back to the other battery. Take all this off. We need that wire. We need this wire. thing is still cooking it'll like I say it's not gonna stop for four to five months or so this one the meter came off so it's open voltage let me pop the meter back on I'm sorry for the camera angles, folks. This is tough with filming freehand and trying to do all this single-handed. Okay. And then we have to connect. Well, that's good. We got both meters going the same spot. That's not good. Okay. Come on. Get on there. 
Nope. Keeps falling off. And this is getting quite frustrating for me and probably for you. Okay. Here we go. Get back up there. 2.2 volts. Then it'll climb slowly up to 2.8. Let's turn on our motors again. I gotta grab this motor, get it hooked up. This is about to turn off. So we'll get our one motor started. That connection. This is our other connection. Now what is going? Now we got one amp worth of motor spinning. And uh, it's going down very slow. This will probably run for several hours. And again, this is one plate. When we build this, it's going to be 60 plates, and they're going to be a lot bigger than 6x6. Six six. They're going to be probably 8x12. So expect a lot of power. Really amazing for a a battery that will probably cost about thirty dollars to manufacture in bulk and be able to be recharged twenty to thirty thousand times has. No environmentally damaging elements, fully recyclable. I really can't think of how you'd recycle this. There's nothing that could go wrong. You'd probably just have to clean it every 30 years, reassemble it, and then go for another 30 years. The, the chemistry doesn't degrade. It can't go anywhere. The aluminum can't go anywhere, and the the membranes can't go anywhere. They can't uh, break down or decompose. So anyhow, how this been? This one's been recharged and discharged uh, seventeen hundred times. Anyhow, that's what's going on at the battery lab. Signing off.